Hello everyone, uh, welcome again to Hybrid Accounts channel. And today we're just going uh, to try and do this question. Look at the requirements. Required, calculate the value of inventory held. We just need to know the value of our inventory held. Now look, uh, we got three products. We have product A, uh, product B, as well as product C, as you see here. And now, uh, if you look at this information, we have cost. We have selling price, modification cost, and I sell marketing cost as well as units held. So how do we go about this? We should know the rationale that inventory should be valued at the lower of cost and net realizable value. This is how we value our inventory, right? We value inventory at the lower of cost. What is the net realizable value? So just take the lower of these two amounts. What is net realizable value? Net realizable value, just take selling cost, less cost of modifying the, the, the product to be able to be in a sellable condition, and then you less other cost necessary to enable the sale. You know, you may have a product not in a sellable condition. So you might have to incur additional costs so as to make it in a sellable condition. And then you will have to take it to the market. Maybe if you could transport it, not as a selling cost, or marketing costs, so you have to deduct them all to arrive at the net realizable value. So that's what we try to do here. So I have the cost per unit, no problem. I have it there. Then I need to obtain the net realizable value for each product. So for product A, net realizable value, I'll take the selling price, which is 20, which is we stated. Then I'll, I'll deduct the modification cost and I will sell, which is nil. So product A doesn't need to be modified, it is already in a sellable condition. And then I'll let the marketing cost that is seven. So 30 minus seven, you have 23. So this will be your net realizable value for product A. And then you proceed this for both product B and C. Now if for product B, uh, I'll take uh, the selling price, which is 12, modification cost minus two, and the marketing cost minus two, which will be eight. As you see it here. And lastly, uh, for product C, I'll take the selling price that is 22. Let's go for modification minus 8 and minus 2, which is marketing cost. So 22 minus 8 minus 2, I will remain with uh, 12 here. So I have net variable value per unit and also I have cost per unit. So we can compare them first. Actually, we are given the unit held here. When it's held, we, we have them, but actually there is no need to use them right now. No need to use them right now, actually. But I just know that for A is 200, uh, for B is 150, and for C is 300. Now let's go and use the rationality for measurement. We take the lower of cost and net realizable value. If for product A, cost is $20, and your is 23. So the lower is 20. As for product B, cost is $9, our NRV is $8 per unit. So $8 is lower, so I take $8. And for product C, while cost is $12, our uh, NRV is also $12, so no change. It just remains at $12. So this is what we do. Now, I'm going to value inventory. At what amount do I recognize inventory? It was 20 per unit, but there are 200 units. So 20 times 200, I have 4,000. As for product B, it, uh, it is $8 per unit, but there are 150 units. So 8 times 150, I have 1,200. And as for product C, cost per unit is $12,000 and 300, I have 3,600. So this is what we do. And actually, the measurement is ready. Now let's just proceed a bit. What if we were supposed uh, to do something uh, in this book? In case, if you see as for product A, cost was 20, but NRV was 23, so NRV is much higher. So it means that there would be no need for any adjustment in the books because I have already recorded something at 20, but NRV is 23, so I cannot modify any. While as for product B, it was at nine, but the way, let's go to product C. Yes, product C, this is 12 and this is 12, so no changes. But for product B, while cost was $9 per unit, uh, we have uh, we had to use 8 here because NRV was lower. So 
there were some adjustments uh, to be made. Now, let's try to make a double entry on this. So uh, let's just speak for product B or alone. So uh, for product B, let's take its cost. Its real, co its real cost was cost of nine dollars per unit times number of units 150. So in the books we had 1,350. While if for NRV, if we have computed it already, it will be eight times 150. That gives us 1,200. So I would have to reduce my example from 1350 to 1200. So, uh, Inventory would have been impaired. You can say impairment of inventory equals to 1350 minus 1200, which would give you uh, 150. So I will have to make the double entry. What should I debit and what should I credit? So I would have to, re to reduce my inventory by 150. So I say that I would credit inventory by how much? By 150. And then I would have to debit impairment loss. Impairment loss like this. And then I say 150 over here. So this is what I should have done uh, in case I had to make some adjustment. In case this was additional information or maybe preparing the financial statement. Impairment loss would go to the income statement. And practically it would go to cost of sales, you know? Because this is about inventory and the inventory because inventory is adjusting the cost of sales. So it will go to cost of sales just like this. I hope everything is fine here. Uh, if you have subscribed to this channel, you can subscribe uh, to 